This is Twit. Rob, you want to talk about the the thing that we disappointed you by not talking about last week? I think you probably disappointed Ken uh, <laughs> more than me. So this is going to be another episode of something Ken should buy. So if you're listening, Ken, which I know you are, I've seen you in the Discord. This one's for you because here is your next PC. So I can't remember if we talked about the the Raspberry Pi 500 being released. Um, I know we have fans, uh, many fans in our panel and and users out there of the Raspberry Pi 400. And the Pi 500 is much the same, but improved with the uh, Raspberry Pi 5 architecture and eight gigabits of RAM. The the position of the GPIO header and and 3x USB A ports swapped over, and the location of the USB C power ports moved. Uh, they're the same the same ones as before in the in the 400, just a different order, and and all this is available for 90 US dollars from Canakit. It's it's actually there. I looked at it today. I really thought about clicking the buy button, but I didn't think I could get it to Ken in time. So maybe next year. Uh, but this isn't the big reveal. You know, we all knew the Pi 500 was coming. We we and we knew it would be great. Uh, and you know, it, it's it's the Pi 400 with the the Pi 5. But what nobody speculated on was the official Raspberry Pi monitor there are, you know there are many portable monitors out there i have one myself for for traveling but for pi fans like you and me this one is it's it's designed for you it's it's designed for pi fans the, the specs come with it comes with a 15.6 inch uh ips lcd display with anti-glare uh 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz Max brightness of 250 nits, 45% uh, color gamut, 80 degree viewing angle, full size HDMI port, front facing stereo speakers has two one by two watts, so don't expect a whole lot from that. And courage, it has the courage to add a 3.5 <laughs> millimeter headphone jack. The courage that Apple has lost years ago and Samsung and all those makers, but Raspberry Pi Foundation keeps that courage going on. It's hilarious. It also has physical buttons for volume, brightness, and power. Uh, it has mounting options, including a kickstand. The, the, the portable monitor display I have does not have a kickstand. It has this um, just a cover that doesn't even stick to it just kind of fits over the top and if you fold it up right you can kind of sit in there but it doesn't hold it up that great so kickstand uh would be a great option or it also has a standard uh vase amount so you can you know mount it to anything you know a, a an arm a, a desktop mount or whatever vase is the standard mount that is on almost all monitors uh, this monitor is powered by a 1.5 amp, 5 volt USB C, uh, powered with dedicated, you can power with a dedicated power supply or through a USB A to Type C cable, uh, powered directly by a USB port on the Raspberry Pi or, or another device such as a monitor. Uh, with with one limitation, or I guess two limitations, that the the brightness is limited to sixty percent and volume to fifty percent when the monitor is powered by a USB port. And all this, just a little bit more than the Pi five hundred itself, one hundred US dollars. So you get the Pi five hundred, you get the monitor, one hundred ninety US dollars plus tax and whatever shipping other fees are in there. There you got your your full computer right there, and perfect for Ken. So I've seen I've seen a couple of complaints about the monitor. One one complaint in particular about the monitor, and that is that the ports are behind the Visa mount. 
So oh. if, if you have, yes. So if you have anything connected to the Visa mount, you really can't get to the ports on the monitor. Which is not that big of a deal, I don't think, because like once you have it mounted up with your Visa mount, do you really need to be getting to the ports to unplug and plug things in? But... This, but this is a complaint. Is it saying have. that you can't get to them or are they like blocked where it can't be used? Uh, I think you just can't get to them. I think you can oh, still okay. have things plugged in because, so of, because of the way it. Enough yeah. of an indent or whatever. So that way you can still get them in behind whatever base of plate you have there. Yeah. So your, your ports on this thing, you, you know, you, you're looking at your monitor. They actually plug in sideways. There's a there's a well. So the cables run in and plug in sideways. Mm. Uh, you just you cannot get to it because that well is directly underneath the visa mount. Um, mm. So that is that is one complaint I've seen people have. Um, I I sort of have another complaint, and that is that none of this stuff supports uh, USB C alt mode. And when you talk about a portable monitor, that seems to me to be like the killer feature that you really would like to have. Um, so I would have loved to have seen the ability to just put the whole thing on USB-C and get, you know, HDMI over USB-C or, or um, uh, you know, one of the other. I don't, I don't remember if USB-C alt mode is HDMI or if it's DVI. Anyway. Um, display oh, so you can't just oh, have a display. single cable even. I don't think so. I've never, I've not seen anywhere in the specs that it supports it. Even if you could, though, I don't think there any of the Raspberry Pis support that. I don't think there's a Raspberry Pi that has has um, USB C right. because it said it's USB A to USB C. Yeah. Oh, that that is dis that's that is disappointing. So it's not quite as cool as it seems. Now you can do it with two cables. So like, it yeah. it's still it's still usable. Um, it's just not like a top of the line um portable monitor. Right. And and so this is something else I would actually like to see on an, a future Raspberry Pi is a fully for fully featured USB C port that can do power delivery out. That this is this is something that I know is sort of niche, but I would love to see power delivery wow. out yeah. from Raspberry Pi. Like um, they have multiple well out and the and the display all in one cable or well yeah that's what yeah. so on a laptop there's USB C ports you can do that. It's it's it'll do USB C power out and it'll do alt modes so that you can just have a single cable to run your display. Oh, oh but you Pi having the out. I would love to see yeah. a Raspberry the I, Raspberry Pi six have a fully featured USB C port on it. I thought you meant the display would, so you could daisy chain them. Would beefing up the components and board to support the power out increase cost significantly? Oh, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. Right, and so that's why that's why they haven't done this, and. That that actually leads nicely into if we're talking about the Raspberry Pi 500 as well, um, the big disappointment that everybody has with the Pi 500, and that is that it's got an NVMe port on the motherboard, but none of the components populated to actually make the thing work. So like the traces are there, but there's just no NVMe header and no the the there's a couple of let's see. There's the header itself to actually physically be able to plug something in. There are two little tiny service mount capacitors and then a 3.3 3 .3 volt power supply. That is what is missing to be able to get an NVMe port on the Pi 500. And, and the fact that the, the case, so the, the actual plastic case, the bottom of it, there's no flap there to be able to get to it, right? Um, there's a couple of other really interesting things. Uh, Jeff Gearling was the, the one that really tore the 500 apart and looked at this. There's also a place that seems to be for power over Ethernet, which is also very, very interesting that, that they, the Raspberry Pi Foundation was thinking about Pi 500 with power over Ethernet. And so these are two, you know, like for certain people, for me, for some of us, th these are really, really cool features that we didn't get that, you know, we would love to have. And... I'm pretty sure what we're seeing here is it's just there's going to be a Pi 500 Pro, right? That's it's it's almost inevitably coming. Um, and the reason they didn't just make these things standard is it would it would increase the price, right? So they they wouldn't be able to sell it for ninety bucks. They'd have to sell it for I don't know 105, 110, something like that. When you talk about adding all these different things to it, um, so yeah, the, the the circuit board to increase the power wouldn't be that much. I mean, you'd, you'd have to beef your traces a little but cost wise it wouldn't be terrible it'd be more of the components you'd have to add in any yeah uh, yeah so the thing that goes with that right so with the 500 with the pi 500 the actual keyboard the the traces are there 
It is on the on the board itself. They literally have the traces there. In fact, there's a Hackaday article, we cover this, where someone sourced the components and made the NVMe slot work. Huh. Um, it's just there's like four different components you have to add to it, at least four, maybe even more than that with some resistors on there. Um, but again, it's just it's gonna it's gonna increase the bill of materials, which is gonna increase the cost of it. And they were hoping to keep probably a sub hundred dollar price point is what they wanted to hit. And you start adding a bunch of things to it, and it's gonna be over that. So all of that to say the Pi 500 itself, yes, on a CPU side, it's an upgrade. But it doesn't have enough of the killer features for me. I'm not ordering a Pi 500. I'm holding out for the Pi 500 Pro, Pi 550. I don't know what they're going to call it. Um, Pi 500 XL. That's that's the one that I'm waiting for. Well, yeah, the XL cool. will include visa mount, base amounts. So. I hope so. I legitimately hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I asked I asked Evan. I interviewed him and I asked him, I said, Man, we need the Visa mounts on the Pi five hundred. I was disappointed to not see it. I'm hoping it's coming on the pro model. The, <laughs> where you'd you'd mount a monitor directly to the No, the, I it doesn't it, it doesn't necessarily have to be Visa, but I, I've just thought for the longest time that it would be nice to have on the bottom of the Pi five hundred keyboard. So, you know, your Pi five hundred, it's a keyboard. Yeah. You mount it to things. It would be nice to have a couple of certs in there, uh, whether it be the visa mounting pattern or not, just a couple of places in there to be able to actually bolt something to it, to be able to put, mount you it. You put on a swing arm then, just like the monitor. Exactly. You know how cool that would be? To be able to have a Pi 500 on a swing arm connected to a, you know, a Raspberry Pi monitor also on a swing arm. That would be cool. Be cool. I could see some use cases there. Mm-hmm. First, you know, you know, I was just kind of looking too. You know, when you're uh, adding components to a pie, you know, there's some nucks that get kind of cheap in there too. And at some point, you're gonna, you know, cross over if you, depending on how much you yes. throw into it, and you kind of then go on. Well, I can have a low end PC for what? Yep. So and that is it just a NUC is it comes with a Windows license. Uh, I don't the one I was looking at, I don't know as it did. It it may or may not be a legitimate Windows license, but it may have Windows installed on it, sure. Yeah. I don't know that I would trust that install of Windows, but it's probably on there. Um yeah. No, that's it, it, the, well the other thing you have to think about too is that Raspberry Pi Foundation, they're very much still thinking about the educational side of things. <laughs> And so they are their one of their main th- focuses is they're making these computers for education. And so trying to keep the cost down for that is a big deal for them too. So like I don't I it does not bother me that they made the Pi 500 and that they made it with the reduced feature set. The thing that annoys me the most is that there wasn't also an announcement that something more was coming. Hmm. Well, think of it this way too. Here's here's a heck of a uh a technician electrical technician uh trainer okay in today's class we're going to get the parts and we're going to surface mount uh oh. parts onto onto this and we're going to make this thing the nvme work and we're going to make the poe work and those coupling capacitors are so tiny there. they are but very small there's your educational focus you're looking for that's true yeah that's and, true. There, and there's there's people that I've got buddies that they Definitely. solder under microscopes. Yep. I mean, that's that's kind of what you have to do now. The, the old days, the, the big old spool, and that's if you got the much skills good. for that, you might as well just go be a surgeon and make lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you I, pop you, a capacitor, you, you're not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, your downside's a lot higher. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I suspect that the guys that can do that with the soldering irons actually make more than the surgeons do in some cases. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about that, but they're they're making good money. Yeah. I, I will say that. Believe believe it or not, in a lot of cases, boy, this is totally off topic. In a lot of cases, though, mm-hmm. most of that money, you know, you spend a hundred thousand dollars for a, 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 a surgery. Most of that goes towards the hospital and not the actual surgeon. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>